Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Today, I am going to dive on in and take a first look at the Warlock Grimoire Volume 4 from my friends over at Cobalt Press. This 288-page hardcover carries an MSRP of $29.99. It is going to be making its way into stores very shortly, but you can grab just the PDF alone right now over at DriveThruRPG for $19.99. All that said, let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got the Warlock Grimoire Volume 4. Few things to mention before we dive on in. First of all, my friends over at Cobalt Press were kind enough to provide me with this review copy, but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share this coverage with you. These days, it's very important that you know that. Also, as far as I understand, Warlock, which was kind of an in-house magazine for Cobalt Press, which covered the Midgard setting, came to an end last year. So this is the final grimoire for Warlock. And I think this actually has content from issues 29 to 37, as well as some new content. So we're gonna dive on in. Should mention, we're not gonna look at each and every page of the book, but I do wanna give you a very good feel for what you're gonna find in the Warlock Grimoire Volume 4. Let's take a look at the back here. Unshackle your mind. Within these dusty pages, uncover the secrets of the world, indeed, of the branches of the multiverse. Collected here only for you are entire lost volumes of esoteric truths, the Warlock Grimoire 4. Dark revelations and wondrous testimonials of dark fantasy monsters and the magic locales and lore of Midgard. That's going to tell us what we're going to find inside which we're going to be taking a peek at anyway, so I'm not going to read through that. So let's jump on in. First thing I will mention is paper stock. Very nice. Very nice. So we've got loads of writers and artists. I'm not going to read all of them because... I'd probably spend 10 minutes mispronouncing a vast majority of their names, but I do want to give them credit here. So we've got, once again, a lot of designers, a lot of artists. So let's see what we've got in our table of contents. Looks like this page is kind of sticking a little bit. So we've got Beyond the Leaves of the World Tree. So we've got Lauren's storytelling. So we're going to have some articles there. We're going to have some new monsters new magic and new player info also. So as far as Warlock magazine, you would have a lot of different things going on with Warlock. So you had the zine essentially, which I gotta be honest, I think that was funded through Patreon. Although you could buy the PDFs, there were also layers. So you had new monster layers all the time. While Warlock has come to a close, I wouldn't be too shocked if Cobalt Press ends up rolling out a new zine which will focus on Tales of the Valiant as opposed to, say, 5e D&D, which, of course, is what Warlock focused on in the Midgard setting. I am a huge fan of Midgard, really like it. I think it is one of my absolute favorite fantasy role-playing settings out there because it's a bit dark, but it's not grim dark. And there's a lot going on in the world of Midgard. And just about any sort of fantasy role-playing campaign you want to run can slide right on in and feel right at home in the Midgard setting. All right, so just taking a peek here, looks like we've got some water undead. So 
So I'm going to be skipping pages here, but I'm trying to find an article to get us started. There we go. Baba Yaga, a tangle of mistruths. How do I know that this story is true? Why, one who was there told it to me. Unknown. Much has been said, and yet still little is truly known of the one they call Baba Yaga. She is the most terrifying of beldams, yet on occasion she is also a dispenser of wisdom and a granter of favors. The wild old woman is known to enjoy dining on young humanoids and has a special fondness for nibbling on gnome, and she is not above eating the tougher meats of, well, anyone else. Yet despite her well-documented appetites, there are those desperate enough to petition her for aid. Even so, the witch's boons frequently come at costs higher than that which drove these unfortunates to solicit her in the first place. Cool, so we're gonna get some information about Bobby Yaga. There's her hut with the chicken legs. So we've got Baba Yaga's cat, some artwork of Baba Yaga. Nice, very cool. So as you'll see, each of these articles are going to be just a few pages in length. So you're gonna get a wide swath of different content in this grimoire. Now I have shared coverage of a previous grimoire, I think off the top of my head, I think it was the second volume. I found it really cool. It's just taking a look through. Looks like we've got some information about various different kobolds, because of course, kobolds in the world of Midgard are different than kobolds, say, in Forgotten Realms or Greyhawk or anything like that. Actually, it looks like that article was a bit longer We've got Misto Cherno, treachery in motion. The histories all claim that Misto Cherno is a direct reflection of the uncertainty and unrest among the many tribes of the Ruthanian Plain. If true, then the Ruthanian Plain is undoubtedly a very sad place, for Misto Cherno has never been bigger nor stronger. A long way from a mere quartet of walled wagons, Misto Cherno now boasts a rumbling flotilla of easily 250 massive wagons and dozens of smaller ones. That sounds pretty interesting. Sort of a nomad tribe, I guess. Kind of a, a mobile city. As you can see, artwork's very solid. certainly has quite a bit of an old school line art sort of vibe to it. Endless skies, elemental plane of air. Imagine an endless expanse of azure skies, a pearlescent radiance of no discernible source perpetually shines upon drifting white clouds, dancing on determined currents of air. Those traveling to this plane often imagine an empty void of gas but this is far from the truth. Though no ubiquitous and permanent stretch of ground exists, motes of terrain ranging from miles across to merely pebbles do float through the firmament. These islands host a variety of animal and plant life, and some boast settlements and even cities. Dangers and wonders exist in equal measure for those brave enough to explore the elemental plane of air. Looks like we're gonna get some information about that, probably a bit more in depth. So this looks like that runs about eight pages or so. Then we get the elemental plane of water, elemental plane of earth. I am very intrigued. Okay, so now we're gonna get into monsters. The Ahu Nixta, hive mind of the concurrent chronosphere. In the time before Midgard, there was only the void. And within that twilight dwell the Ahu Nixta. While mortals use the name to define an ancient race of aberrant void spawn tyrants, it may just as easily represent an ideal or the wellspring of the 
Ahu Nixta's very existence is a primordial name given to these same aberrations by the dragons who coined it from a repeated syllabic phrase pulled from their incessant maddening chatter. Font is a little small. Thankfully, I'm not completely stumbling over as I read. But that smaller font also means that we have a lot of content packed on each page. So it looks like this is a bestiary section here. A variety of different creatures. The third triannual Zobek Cobalt Trap Making Competition. I think now we've moved into the players section. So yes, there's the Warren Guild. All hail Vinslow. Now past the pudding. <laughs> so looks like some information about that guild. Blue House Red Tides. The Blue House is a largely unassuming compound though with cold iron barred windows and walls of striking robin's egg blue. Found just down the hill from Zobek's mighty citadel in the Citadel District. If you're not overly familiar with the Midgard setting from Cobalt Press, Zobek is kind of the core city. It is a free city, so it's not affiliated with any of the nations. And in fact, just recently, we saw a Zobek source book that was really, really well done. So I gotta say, unfortunately, we're getting some adhesive that has kind of spilled out from the margins there. So some of these pages are sticking together a little bit. And then as I'm kind of pulling the pages apart, it is, it's not necessarily tearing the page, but it is lifting some of the paper off of the page. So we've got Deep Knowledge, the shores of Ankishal. Founded and built on the ruins of a sunken empire, the city of Casadega is a boomtown of technological wonders. On seemingly every corner stands a workshop, some built on the rubble of previous failed experiments, analyzing and tinkering with discoveries extracted from the ruins beneath the streets. Arcane scholars, artificers, craftspeople, entrepreneurs, and a healthy dose of seedy criminals come to the city on the city to find the next big breakthrough. So it looks like we're getting some information about another city here. We've got some magic. Looks like we've got some new spells. Greater Overcharge, Mucus, Thundercrack. Divine Masks. Divine Interventions, Rewards for the Faithful. Cloisters of Outer Darkness, The Inevitability of Ragnarok. Oh, this is written by my pal Wolfgang Bauer. Nice. Looks like we've got some various different magic items there too. Void ships to the void and back. Aerial vessels such as the flying cities of the Sikkim, the dwarven balloons, and even the questionable cobalt crafted ships, while certainly not common, generate excited commentary in taverns and market squares across Midgard. Even rarer though, are the crafts that soar above the atmospheric constructs to venture into the void, called the Guna Gap Gap. I don't know if that's what the kobolds call it. Where the glittering planar spheres hang in the branches of Yggdrasil. At least that's how I've always pronounced that word. This looks really good. And also, you want to keep in mind, the grimoires make for some nice, light, bite-sized reading to kind of give you some inspiration for your own adventures and campaigns. So I guess now we're in the player section. This must have been a GM section. Tick, tick, boom, the Cobalt Trapsmith. 
Kobolds are particularly fond of traps, and they're, they have a sure knack at crafting bizarre contraptions and deadly devices to confuse and confound even the most skilled of adversaries. Feel free to come in and browse our glorious offerings. Just watch your step. So, different traps. Yep. We get a visual representation of that. It's like that was a fairly long section here. Sprig gnomes. Windrunner elves. Elusive, eccentric, and unpredictable, the Windrunner elves have quietly traversed Midgard's vast central grasslands for millennia. These diminutive nomads roaming the steppes and plains are thought to originally hail from the elven capital of Safaya, long since abandoned during the Great Retreat. It's looking like we are possibly getting some new character species, as well as information about NPCs. And we're going to hit an index. And that is going to be it for a look inside the Warlock Grimoire Volume 4 from Cobalt Press. Once again, this hardcover is arriving in stores. It's going to carry an MSRP of $29.99. Or, of course, you can grab the PDF right now over at Drive Through RPG for $19.99. And 99 cents. All right. That is it for this time out. Of course, I will have a review of the Warlock Grimoire Volume 4 in the very near future. So, of course, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that bell because it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this first look, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. And of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for a whole lot of tabletop gaming news, reviews, and more you will not find here on the YouTube channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McLear. Thank you very much for watching. And until I see you next time, here's hoping all of you get to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang.